TARDIS, amigos. That's right. It's time for the Corona Post Show. What a day here at El Sunzal, the surf city El Salvador. Longboard Classic lives up to all the expectations and more. Of course, leave it to the elimination rounds to provide the ultimate fireworks. Some of the highest heat totals we've seen of this event. Some of the highest single scoring waves we've seen of this entire contest went down today. Chris Cote, the Waxhead, Matt Janoski, Mitchell Salazar. That was uh, a day for the books. I mean, for sure, one of the most impactful days we've seen yet on the WSL Longboard Championship Tour. Phenomenal waves as we look out there. The free surfers are making their way behind us right now. And why wouldn't you? It was just one of the premier days of longboard surfing of all time, to be honest. Some of the surfers knocked out. Some of the surfers progressing. All of them super stoked to be here. And I'd say on the women's side, Chloe Calmon and Natsumi Talaoka really stood out more than anybody else. Their wave selection was on point. We had a couple of really close heats. But, man, what a day. Richie Cravey moving through against Chase Leader in the dying moments, too. Some fun heats, Chris. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to unpack here on this Corona Post Show. Before we get into it, let's go back to the winner of that last heat, standing by now with Sam Bleakley. Thanks so much, Chris. Natsumi, such a strong way to end the day. The last ride of today's surfing, it was you and it was the highest score of the event so far, an 8.5. Talk us through that incredible wave. Yeah, um, the last wave, I've been waiting for a long time with the priority. Um, the wave is just amazing, the perfect. I think it's the best wave um, on the compete for me so far. And tell me how the experience has been coming to Surf City El Salvador. Have you visited before and what do you think of the place? Yeah, it's first time to visit here. Um, I watched in the ISA contest before. Um, I wish I, I was there, but I couldn't go. But um, this time, uh, finally I came here and then wave is pumping every day. I'm so happy to be here. And was it nice competing against Kira, a woman you would have had a lot of good battles with over the years? Yeah, yeah, I was competing with her before, and then I know her surfing is very good, so I just try to focus my, my riding. We've got a lot of opportunities to talk about shapers from all over the world, but tell us about the Japanese shaper that you work with and what special boards you've brought to El Sunzal. Yeah, um, my shaper from Japan, he's also a professional surfer in Japan, and I um, surf with him all the time, and then he know me. I'm small, and then I'm, yeah, I'm very small com um, compared to other people, so he just custom um, for me. For the, this board is um, Pintail. I used to use in the Scotch tail, but um, um, my shaper shaped me the board for Bells and uh, El Salvatos. And what will it take for you to get in the top eight and have the opportunity to go for a world title in Malibu? Um, I'm not thinking about the Malibu. I just focus on the heat by heat. Yeah. Well, the strategy is working. You're surfing fantastic. And I'm sure you've got some messages for all your fans tuning in back home in Japan. Congratulations, Natsumi. Incredible surfing. Back to you, Chris. So much joy pouring out of Natsumi right there, as she should, because that was an incredible performance. Just finishing our day with the highest single wave score. And what a way to do it. I mean, you always think of, right, speed, power, flow, when you think of professional surfing. You add a longboard to the mix. You add the word grace, you know, emphasize the style to it. I think Natsumi did uh, exactly what she needed to do right there to kind of get her ball rolling. You know, she still has a chance of making that final eight. And I like that uh, Sam tried to trip her up there a little bit, try to get it in her mind. And she said, no, it's all about what's in front of me right now. But uh, in terms of her chances of qualification, what do you think Natsumi can do here today? She this was week? very patient in that heat. And that's something I really wanted to look at between her and Tully White. They're in a clutch position. Both of them need great results. And for Natsumi to have just almost a perfect heat there, not in terms of points, but wave selection, when it counted most, Kira had a wave under priority, but Natsumi waited for that set and she committed. She surfed critical on the rail and on the nose. And that's why it was the highest heat total and wave of the day and highest wave of the whole contest. Yeah, and a really competitive heat, too. I mean, Kira lost with a pair of sixes in her scoreline right there. Most heats, you'd be making it out of that with with that heat total. 
but I personally thought it was the wave selection from Natsumi Taoka on the best waves, a large wave to finish off the day in 8.5. But I also feel like at this point of the stage, uh, event number three of the tour, everybody's a great surfer. If you're not making the right decisions in the moment, you won't be making it through these clutch heats, Chris. Yeah, interesting to note, too. Uh, throughout the afternoon, is the waves were kind of the reluctant superstars of the afternoon. Got a little less consistent, but the waves that came through were fully impactful. We saw a lot of heats go down where it was just two rides per surfer. Uh, again, some of the highest numbers coming through. I feel like patience, a critical element in success today. The surfers that went out there and really waited for that key moment it, it seemed to pay off off and I, I had doubts throughout a couple of those heats going I don't know <laughs> might have been a mistake I ate those words more than I'm full of words right now because I ate them all day long these surfers are elite level and patience is a huge part of success here in this event the conditions today we had half an hour of great waves and then we'd have half an hour of interval waves where there's still some sets but nothing on the in-between which is really difficult in a competition because if you're going out there with their sets in mind fantastic if you want to add to that total sometimes they just weren't available and well done to Natsumi and that board that pintail in the background as we're watching right now that looked really buttery one of my uh, mottos to the people I coach is your nose ride is only as good as you turn and a pintail like that for Natsumi is allowing her to get back in the pocket use the rail which is all scoring and jam it back up off the bottom for the nose rides that we saw for that excellent score and I also felt there was a lot of adapt adaptability in the last few heats of the day uh, people noticed and recognized that some heats were very slow in comparison to others you saw Kira right there and Natsumi as soon as they got their first wave in the opening exchange they wanted to be able to back it up very quickly and I thought that was a crucial part to the people that were actually being able to make it through heats and some that were just losing by a slight margin. But a couple of great heats out there. I think the second heat of the day between the three men, Taka Inoue taking the win, J.R. Esquivel, and Johnny the Ripper, all three of those guys, despite two of them getting into the ER, are all in the round of 16 now. Yeah, and you know, it, it is all about poise as well because when you're waiting that long, as all the surfers kind of had to do probably from around 11 a.m. on, you know, you wait 20 minutes for a wave to come through, you take off, and it's a screamer out the back more than a few times. You know, we saw surfers waiting, you know, till you would probably start to feel a lot of nerves, but they got up, they got the job done, and we saw those big numbers come through on that outside section, that bowling part of the wave that offered up these surfers that critical area to perform. And speaking of performance, we got a lot of news coming through the wire today. The biggest news we got was the announcement of the 2024 WSL Championship Tour. Check it out. Puts herself in a great position, comes flying out. Able to navigate that tube. Into the barrel. Wow, that was wild. Drops in, drains through this section. It's all fun and games until we start losing surfers on the CT. We cut this field down, and now we're getting into the swing of things. Managing his speed so incredibly well. Yago going the distance. What more do you want, people? Bongia, the crowd is absolutely losing their minds, and it's for good reason. Coming to you from Cloud Break, one of the best waves in the world. It's the pathway to the WSL Finals. This is what it's all about, winner take all. This is for a world title. Let's celebrate your world champions. If you're not excited, there's something wrong with you. That is an awesome looking season. And of course, my eyes are firmly focused on Cloud Break, August 20th to the 29th. Surf fans have been asking for Cloud Break to return to the schedule for a long time. They got their wish, and I love that it's the final event of the year. All the stakes leading into the Rip Curl WSL Finals. This right here is going to be your 2024 schedule. Rights, lefts, barrels, high performance waves. That's got to get you fired up. What more do you want, people? In the words of yourself, Chris Cote, that is such a cool lineup and I'm so excited. Different forms of wave riding. We're here at the Longboard World Tour, but of course we're heavily inspired by the Championship Tour as well. Should be a very fun one, Chris. 
I think it all comes down to pipeline, really getting a good start right there, making the midseason cut, and then going into Fiji as the last event of the regular season. I'm pumped. That promo, promo has me pumped for 2024. And it literally was last week that we were on the beach at Trestles watching the titles go down. So it's really cool to know what to expect for 2024. And we do still have Challenger Series events. We've yep. got the Malibu Finals. So a lot of surfing left in 2023. So let's get to what went down today. Some of the marquee matchups that we had our eyes on or started off early in the morning. This was uh, Taka Inoue, Virgilio Jr., Esquivel, and Johnny the Ripper. Uh, this heat right here really provided an incredible start to our day. So we had to cut the day short yesterday just due to some tidal swings. But when we kicked off the day, Heat 8 started us off with a bang. This was a crazy heat to start it off. And these surfers wouldn't have minded if it was last night or this morning. They'll take anything they get in Tucker, making the most of it, and came out on top of the young guns. Yeah, and I think they did a very good job in preparing for this heat too. After watching the first heat go out this morning, Taka was obviously on the two best waves during the heat. He got the victory, but I felt like it wasn't a victory that was very easy to get. He really had to battle with J.R. Esquivel and also Johnny the Ripper, but he was poised on the two best waves that he caught during those 30 minutes, and for good reason, moving straight into the round of 16. There was a lot of surfing today, but if I'm not mistaken, JR and Johnny the Ripper both made it out of their yep. the ER heats, the emergency round, <laughs> the last chance qualifier. So this was the result that we saw early on this morning in Yui with a 7.67 and a 7.3. And this trend of high scoring heats continued when we sent the women out there for their elimination round we saw some incredible heats go down and big numbers that followed so uh, the men and women definitely putting on a show for us today but to start our you know to start our day like that with you know three surfers that all put up numbers that would have got them wins in any other heat it's exactly how you want to start it and that's how the role continued let's talk about Avalon Gall and Crystal Hewlett. This was another heat that had the beach talking. Everybody was fired up to watch this one. Avalon, of course, always putting on a clinic of beautiful surfing, expert nose riding. This was a fun one to watch. A super, well, super educated performance from Avalon, really stepping it up, showing a heat IQ that I haven't seen too often in the past, to showing the maturity with a competitive surf. And I thought her positioning in the lineup was key for her success as well. As you see right here, the combination of the nose rides, but also the Great rail surfing added to a couple of good scores, a massive heat total, surpassing the 15 points for Avalon Gall. But once again, being able to read the lineup and decipher it the way she did, that was some impressive stuff right there, Chris. Style, style, style. I mean, that right there is just beautiful surfing. And I loved how she controlled her speed, which to me is, you know, one of those elements that it's not in print in the uh, judging criteria, but it is so important. And especially a wave like this that has plenty of power. These boards are big, they go super fast. So to see both of these surfers with that ability to maintain their speed while controlling it, that right there is elite level athleticism. I do feel sorry for Crystal. She put on a great performance. It would have been enough to take out a lot of the heats throughout the event so far. A committed performance, surfing super tight into the pocket, but Avalon just getting the better of her with strong rail calves and commitment and really big set waves. Really stoked to see how Avalon goes in this heat. Moving into the next couple of rounds, things are going to get very spicy in the lead-up to Malibu. And I thought that was a, it was really important to showcase a lot of the Goofy footers doing well out here, too. There's not really a distinct advantage between a regular or a Goofy out here, and I felt like Chloe Calmon really set the standard for that in one of the first heats of the elimination round for the women. But f finalizing the day with Gaul's performance and then um, our Japanese competitor in the last heat, I thought that really showed it, uh, went to show that the development and the evolution of a lot of these surfers throughout a 24-hour period can be noticeable here at Insulsal. Yeah, and I will say, before we get into our top five, that must, Natsumi did get the highest single wave score of the day. Uh, just came in, I mean, a second too late. We filled our top five, but she's the top five in our hearts. Everybody out there knows it. Okay, good. Let's move on. Now let's get to your top five of the day here at the Corona Post Show. We're going to start it off with... Richie Cravey. Now, uh, Richie Cravey, wily competitor. You know, he's had to do the hard work to get to where he is today. And uh, he's had to uh, kind of rely on 
kind of his own skills as well as a waterman, how to body surf all the way in to save his board from the rocks. A great performance from Richie Cravey. One of his highlights of the trip so far was searching on the rocks for that crab that he found with his son last <laughs> night. But to top it off with an elimination round win is just so much more special. And, and I felt like going up against a very dangerous young competitor against Chase Leader, he needed to surf a very smart heat. He did that. He did lose his board once, but was able to recover in time to not only get the win, but come from behind and get the win too, Chris. He's a merman. <laughs> I love to see that. And there's the sportsmanship we like. Full credit to Chase Leader too. He is an incredible surfer. And locking in his spot in the final eight, heading to the Malibu finals, Kaniella Stewart. Got a win here, just doing it Kaniella style. Big turns, long nose rides, oozing with style. Yeah, surfing still within himself. I'm feeling like he's still got another 20 or 30% left. Surfing very relaxed, upright style, and relaxed body language, which is what we've come to know from Caniella. I still think he's got more to give, though. 100%, and I think he surfed a very smart heat. Knew that he just needed to make it through this one. But as Matt said, has a lot more to give. And I still feel like he hasn't even peaked throughout the season so far. So heading into Malibu as one of the top seeds should be good for him, Chris. He had to get his hair wet in this contest. So we'll see when that happens. We'll report it for you. Number three, Chloe Kalman, two sevens on her way to victory. This was just a really convincing win. I think she was throwing away multiple sixes. This is why she's a, a veteran and always a title threat. Yeah, she drew some creative lines using different elements of the surfboard that we've seen all day. Really liking the variety in Chloe's turns and as always, style and grace and flow throughout all of her moves. And you know what? She's warming up for Malibu. No, and she had to surf one of those heats where the tide was transitioning, had to really read the lineup well and was able to garner herself a pair of sevens and as you said, throwing a couple of, away a couple of scores in the good range, Chris. That's right. Well, speaking of uh, scores in the good range, this guy's been doing it all week long. Virgilio Jr. Esquivel representing the Philippines. His fan base is growing by the minute. With every turn, he gains four global fans. There you go. The facts coming from Chris Cote. But I love the power game, but also the technical nose riding back to El Sunzal. And he was here earlier in the year and showing that he's gained a lot of experience. And I'm loving the creative lines that Rogelio is bringing to the World Normal Tour. And not being afraid to go for it on the outside section as well. That's been crucial to a lot of his big scores here. In the past, it should be due, it should be doing the same throughout the event. And the young lady so good, they named her three times. Maria Fernanda Reyes with the performance of the day, the performance of the event. She went out there and put on an absolute clinic, dropping multiple perfect score, well, near perfect scores, but her surfing was just flawless. Wave selection right there, the best of the best all day long. The ability for Marfa to go from the nose, long nose rides, hang tents to the rail calves, showing a lot of commitment on set waves, and just having a look at this, just leaving nothing left to chance. Marfa just cutting that one back through the inside section and just showing the judges she has full control and authority over that board. And very comfortable in hard conditions out there too. A lot of large waves on offer and she was on the best ones in those 30 minutes of that heat. I was so impressed with how fast she was surfing too. I mean, she was flying down the line. Everything was in perfect control. So our number one moment of the day, Maria Fernanda Reyes. And what a day it was. And guess what? We might be back on tomorrow. Join us bright and early right here, live from Surf City, El Salvador. You could be witnessing day three of the action here from El Sunzal. You're gonna have to tune in first thing tomorrow. Before you do that though, Check out these highlights. Get inspired. Go surfing. See you tomorrow. Welcome back to the Surf City El Salvador Longboard Classic. We are right back to it. Day one was a beauty. Day two looks like more of the same. Let's do this. Strong turn of the pocket. Grab the rail. Great score to start things off. That's what he has that separates him from everybody else. He knows writing skills. The hanging heels. <laughs> JR. Oh, nearly pulled it up the end. Caniella Stewart exercises his will. Calmness, the soul, the style we see from Caniella Stewart. Gets straight to the nose, all 10 over, with style.
Kirby Fletcher S cross stepping cutback. And Amado could be super proud of that performance. No leash. That's going to be quite a swim. Tony Silvani up and riding. It's a good vibe. That's the crime on attacking arm I love to see. Toes on the nose. All the way on the outside. Crab real car for Johnny the Ripper. Cindy out the back on the nose. Chloe on the inside. This is so cool. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.